Today on BRS TV, we're going to discuss the BRS bio pellet reactor. This is going to be very similar to the standard GFO and carbon reactor, except for a few of the accessories and components are a little bit different. The reactor is designed to tumble bio pellets like these and keep them free flowing for significant periods of time. The design is pretty simple. We have a canister like this one, inside of which we'll have a clear hard shell cartridge like this one, which will hold all of the bio pellets. The cartridge holds about a cup and a half of pellets while still allowing room for tumbling. This means that it's rated for up to a 75 gallon tank. However, I think that you could stretch that to a 90 since this is just a rough estimate. After that, you probably want to consider one of the larger bio pellet reactors, like the one made by Reef Octopus. Once you have your cartridge full of bio pellets and fully assembled, you can add it back to your canister, just drop it inside and screw the cap down. Water is going to enter the unit and fall down the sides and then go back up through the cartridge in the center. This is going to cause all of the bio pellets to tumble around and stay free flowing. The reactor comes with the canister housing as well as a refillable cartridge inside, swivel dual o-ring push connect fittings, as well as six feet of tubing, three feet for each side, a wrench to open the canister, a shutoff valve, as well as a push connect fitting for attaching to pumps like a maxi jet and a thread by push connect fitting for screwing on to popular pumps like the mag drive. If you purchase the combo pack, it would also come with some bio pellets. There are a hundred different pump options you could use to feed a reactor like this. However, there are a couple that we recommend. First one is a mag drive three. This pump is capable of handling a significant amount of head pressure which means you're never going to have to worry about the cartridge getting clogged up with tank debris because you can just increase the flow using the included valve. Attaching the pump to the reactor is very easy. Just screw on the included fitting. And since it's a push connect fitting on the top, you can just slide the tubing right in. Of course, it's always smart to use the pre-filter and keep as much garbage as you can out of the reactor. It's also possible to use a power head like a MaxiJet 1200, however they don't handle head pressure particularly well. So that means if you have a lot of floating debris in your tank, it's possible it could get caught up in the strainers on the cartridge and slow down the flow which would stop the pellets from tumbling. That means that you may have to take it out and clean out the strainers from time to time as part of your maintenance schedule. You can help prevent that by using a foam pre-filter like this one or using filter socks on your sump intake. So which pump should you purchase for your new bio pellet reactor? Well for me, the only thing worse than buying a more expensive option that I didn't actually need is first buying the less expensive option, finding out it didn't work, and still having to purchase this one which only made it more expensive. That said, if you are like me, you have a graveyard of maxi jets in the closet just begging to be resurrected. In that case, I would definitely try the MaxiJet because I've personally had a lot of luck running my bio pellet reactors off of the MaxiJet. If you're looking to get the right pump for absolute sure right from the beginning, you're going to want to get the Meg Drive 3.